Thank you so much for sharing in God's Word as we share together today. And um, I, I do want to say this, that uh, we thank you uh, for praying uh, for people. I told them, I told um, Don McIntyre that you'd be praying for him and, and then Lorraine Woods and they both came through their surgery in good shape. But I have a couple of cards here today. We'll pass around at Fellowship Meal and you can sign it, maybe share a word of encouragement and uh, with them to encourage them. But we also want to uh, share with you that we've been praying and, and giving towards Haiti, the country of Haiti and the earthquake. And over last Sunday, I believe I told you it was about $850,000 had been given through the Free Methodist Church. But now the total is over one million. One million, a little over that. So we thank God for that. And then also, um, thank you for praying for those people in the country of Chile. Uh, Jane and I have had the privilege of being there. And our daughter Kay is serving there. And her husband Leo and, and our granddaughter who's about eight months old, Sophia. And uh, we heard from them yesterday morning, about eight o'clock in the morning. And then we heard from our grandson who recently was, the oldest grandchild was recently married and he and his wife live in the country of Chile. And uh, we heard from all of them. And um, our daughter Kay made it out with um, Leo and Sophia. They went down about 20 flights of stairs after the earthquake. And they went, excuse me, they went down those stairs and um, made it out, were able to locate their automobile, drove to his parents' home, uh, which has a one-story, It's a, the house is a one-story structure, so uh, they felt that it would be safer there. So we were anxious to hear from them yet today, and so they appreciate your prayers, and they want you to know that, and uh, we thank you very much for doing that. Now, uh, as we share together today, we... Um, there are a number of people who've contributed to this, and we thank God for that. Uh, I think of uh, the University of Illinois. Now, there's a junior college here as well, isn't there, in Champaign-Urbana? Yeah, Parkland. Okay, Parkland. That's the one I couldn't remember. Okay, University of Illinois, Parkland. Probably there's Ivy Tech around. But one time there was a young fellow. He was riding a bicycle around on his college campus and he had a t-shirt on and on the back of his t-shirt it said, I'm going to be a doctor. Boy, all right, that's good. And then they said on the back of his bicycle there was a sign and it said, I'm going to be a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Well, when we think about that, um, I think of the Australian soldier who suffered a um, concussion while serving in his country's armed forces. Now they say this is factual. He was about five foot, uh, five feet, four and a half inches tall. So that would be about up to me. I'm supposed to be six foot tall. Okay, I don't know if I've shrunk any or not, I don't know. But anyway, he's about, well, he was five, four, and a half. And then he said he was injured, and for some reason this set off reactions in his body, and then he grew to about six feet, three inches tall. Now, I don't know if you believe that or not, but they said this occurred. Now, it's very strange about this Australian soldier. But one has said that uh, there are a number of times when we as a people never grow to reach our full intellectual and our spiritual stature until after we suffer some terrible blow. The blow might be finances. It could be health problem. It might be that we lost a job or some way we were trying to make it in a, in, a, in a place of study or school and it didn't go properly. Well, this, there's a super big question for you and for me today. And that is, are you reaching your potential, your full potential as a follower 
of Jesus Christ, as a follower of Jesus Christ? Are you reaching their full potential? Now, you may be growing because you've suffered a blow. And when I think about this, I think of the people in Chile. It's a long, if you look on the map, it's a long, narrow country. It's about 3,000 miles long. The, the, be, the, the biggest width is about 150 miles. Now today, I would think, and this is not on their case, but I would think they would really be searching for God and calling out to God for what happened. Well, I think in America, when in fact 9-11-01-2001, the Twin Towers, the other plane crash, and people did come. I can remember um, in our local congregation, one day a lady came and said, I just want to pray at the altar. I said, come ahead. That's fine. People were coming. People were coming to services. But then it didn't last. As, as nearly as I can tell. Well, when we think about this question, um, it may be that, that uh, you may be growing because you long in your heart. You want to be more like Jesus, more like him. It's a big, big question. Are you moving forward in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ? That's what the Lord wants us to do. Well, um, this just reminds me of a kitchen timer. It's not. It's a play toy, okay? It's, it's a deal that our grandchildren play with at a certain age, and they set the hands on the clock, and, and I think of a timer, well, uh, of a kitchen timer. Do you have a kitchen timer in your kitchen? Do you have one on your microwave? Yeah, okay. Um, well, what do we use a kitchen timer for anyway? What do we use a kitchen? Think about that. Uh, we set a timer to let us know how long it will be before the food is cooked and it's ready to eat. Well, something, you know, something's supposed to cook for 20 minutes and so we set the timer, don't we? And the timer's up after 20 minutes. It goes 20, 19, 18, down to zero, and then we hear. Well, um, the timer's counting down for us. When I think about this, you know, it's saying to us, really, when that goes off, it's ready. It's time. The food is ready. We want to serve it so we can eat. Well, we read from Matthew 25, 14 through 30 today. Jesus talks about a very wealthy man who had three servants. Three servants. The man was going on a trip. And he really trusted these three servants. They gave, he gave each servant some money to keep for him while he was gone. To one servant he gave a great deal of money. Five talents. Now as I understand it best, one talent is about a thousand dollars or a little more. So he gave that man $5,000, a little more. Then he gave another servant 2000 which was like $2,000, a little more, two talents. Then the one servant won. So he had a little over $1,000. Well, he wanted to see what they would do with the money while he was gone. Well, we read about the first two servants that we read today. You'll notice in this scripture in Matthew 25. That in fact, he, they went and at once put the money to work. The one who had five gained five more. The one who had two gained two more. But the third servant, what did he do? But he dug a hole and he put the money in the hole and kept it safe, he thought. Then, well, it was like... An alarm going off, you see. The wealthy man came back home. Oh, he was very happy with the first two. Very happy with them. Well done. But then he scolded severely the third servant. Well, Jesus shares this parable. The parable, the practical story, is about money, yes. But it's also about our lives. He wants every one of us, for every one of us here today, He wants the best for us. He wants for us to be willing to give our lives to Him and say, use us however you please. It's like 
handing God a piece of paper and you've already signed your name at the bottom, the paper is all blank and say, here it is. You fill it in. We trust you, God. You, you, you know the best. Well, He wants us to take care of our minds. He wants us to take care of our hearts. He wants us to take care of our bodies. To do great things for the Lord. To reach our potential. Well, it's like I believe the best words that a Christian could ever hear.